The scripture message this morning is from the Old Testament. That's why we printed the Bible this morning. But we're not going to read all of this. We'll just refer to it in the message. But uh, we will read from verses 3 to 13. Verse 3 to 13. And I'll read it in English. And then Kawabe san will read it in Nihongo. Second Chronicles 20, verses 3 to 13. Jehoshaphat was afraid and turned his attention to seek the Lord and proclaimed a fast throughout all Judah. So Judah gathered together to seek help from the Lord. They even came from all the cities of Judah to seek the Lord. Then Jehoshaphat stood at the assembly of Judah and Jerusalem in the house of the Lord before the new court. And he said, O Lord, the God of our fathers, are you not the God in the heavens? And are you not ruler over all the kingdoms of the nations? Power and might are in your hand, so that no one can stand against you. Did you not, O our God, drive out the inhabitants of this land before your people Israel and give it to the descendants of Abram, your friend forever. They have lived in it and have built you a sanctuary here for your name, saying, Should evil come upon us, the sword or judgment or pestilence or famine, we will stand before this house and before you for your name is in this house, and cry to you in our distress, and you will hear and deliver us. Now behold, the sons of Ammon and Moab and Mount Seir, whom you did not let Israel invade when they came out of the land of Egypt, they turned aside from them and did not destroy them. See how they are rewarding us by coming to drive us out from your possession which you have given us as inheritance. O oh, our God, will you not judge them? For we are powerless before this great multitude against us. Nor do we know what to do, but our eyes are on you. All Judah was standing before the Lord with their infants, their wives, and their children. Koabesa. <laughs> ヨシャパテは恐れてただひたすら主に求めユダ全国に断食を告知したユダの人々を集まってきて主の助けを求めたすなわちユダの全ての町々から人々が出てきて主を求めたヨシャパテは主の宮にある新しい庭の前でユダ
ご覧ください彼らが私たちにしようとしていることを彼らはあなたが私たちに得させてくださったあなたの所有地から私たちを追い払おうとしてきました私たちの神をあなたは彼らを裁いてくださらないのですか私たちに立ち向かってきたこのおびただしい大軍に当たる力は私たちにはありません私たちとしてはどうすればよいか分かりませんただあなたに私たちの目を注ぐのみですユダの人々は全員主の前に立っていた彼らの幼子たち妻たち子供たちも共にいたテン先生 comes and joins me Father God, we pray that the words of my mouth and Ken's mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts will be acceptable to you in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, this morning, as we looked at the 20th chapter of 2 Chronicles, we read of a huge army from across the Dead Sea made up of men from several nations invading and declaring war on Judah. コンチョの聖書箇所は、第2列を歴代史20章です。司会を挟んで対峙する多民族軍団が、ユダ王国に対して戦線を布告した歴史的な事実です。Now, the king of Judah at the time all this was happening was a man named Jehoshaphat. 当時、ユダヤの王はヨシャパテ王でした。And Jehoshaphat, the Bible tells us, was a good king. But he wasn't a good king because he was a great administrator or a great warrior. He was called, excuse me, he was called a good king because he followed God's laws. In other words, in God's eyes, the, his character was more important than his skills and abilities. Reminds me of 20 years ago, I was standing in line at a voting station in Florida to vote for a new leader in the United States. <coughs> And after thinking about the candidates, I commented to the person standing next to me that I was not going to vote. The man I was not going to vote for was probably better qualified for the position than the man I was going to vote for. My friend immediately responded with these words Bob, you're not voting for the man with the best skills and abilities. You're voting for the man with the best character. And this, of course, was right. When you participate in selecting your leaders, do you make your decision based on their skills and their power or their character? Something to think about as we select our leaders. But while Jehoshaphat was a man of good character and a man who followed God's laws, he was also a man subject to fear. And verse 3 tells us Jehoshaphat was afraid. See, three huge armies had invaded Judah and were advancing toward Jerusalem. He had to do something, and he didn't have much time, so what could he do? 
このやり方を打たなければなりませんそしてあまりにも時間がないという中で彼に何ができたでしょう、well. He could, he could recruit some、uh, more men into his army, but then they would be untrained and、uh, therefore they probably would be prepared for the battle. Or maybe he could make an alliance with another country like Egypt. However, that would require time and it could be very risky. You see, Egypt was a great power and Judah might find itself serving Egypt. But notice, notice this that those kinds of thoughts. Never even crossed Jehoshaphat's mind. He never cons considered these options or any other options for that matter. The only option that this godly king saw. Was to seek the Lord's help. So Jehoshaphat proclaimed a fast and called the people to the temple where he, the king, prayed to the Lord. You know, this is the third king's prayer in 2 Chronicles. The other two were by Solomon, who looked, who's looked upon as a fairly good king, and the other one by Asa, who is regarded as a very good king in the scriptures. So, having called for fasting and prayer, notice what Jehoshaphat says in next, next in the verse 6 and following as he stands in the assembly of Judah and Jerusalem. He says, O Lord, the God of our fathers, are you not the God in heaven? s And are you not the ruler over all the kingdom, of all the nations? Power and might are in your hand so that no one can stand against you. Did you not, O、oh、our God, drive out the inhabitants of this land before your people Israel and give it to the descendants of Abraham, your friend, forever? They have lived in it. And have built your sanct a sanctuary for you there, for your name, saying, Should evil come upon us, the sword or judgment or pestilence or famine, we'll stand before this house, before you, for your name's written in this house, and I'll cry to you in distress, and you will fear and deliver us. <laughs> Now observe that Jehoshaphat reminds the Lord that the Jews are his covenant people, that the temple where he is praying is God's sanctuary. The place where he promised to hear and answer prayer. Now, 
神様の聖女でありそこで祈られる祈りに神様は耳を傾けられると聞いていることを思い出したのです。And that those to whom Israel had once shown kindness were now coming to destroy her and to take away her land. そしてかつてイスラエルが親切に扱った民族が今や恩を後で返すかのように自分たちに歯向かいこの土地を奪おうとしているのです。Then as Jehoshaphat closed his very impassioned prayer in verse 13, the writer records all of Judah, all the people of Judah were standing before the Lord with their infants, their wives, and their children. Awaiting God's answer. そして13節、ヨサパテは、熱情あふれる祈りを祈,る祈り終えると、ユダヤのすべての人々が、その幼子も妻も、そして子供たちも神様の答えを待って、主の共に主の前に立っていたと記録されています。Now picture that. それを思い描いてください。King has just prayed. 王が祈っています。The people are standing. Waiting. What are they waiting for? God's answer. But then, in the midst of the assembly, the Spirit of God talked, spoke through Jehaziel, the son of Zechariah, and a descendant of Asaph. アサフ族のデデアルデビ人ヤハジエルに主の霊が望みましたヤハジエルはゼカリアの子アサフの子孫です The Spirit of God is speaking through a man 神様の霊がですね一人々に語りました And what the Spirit had to say dispelled the fear that had gripped the nation 主の霊が告げたことはユダヤの民を捕らえた恐れから解放するものでした Specifically, the Lord said, Do not fear or be dismayed because of the great multitude. You see, the answer from God that was given through Jehaziel was that the battle with the invaders was not theirs to fight, it was God's battle. ヤハジエルを通して神様に答えられたのはこの戦いは彼らの戦いではなく神の戦いである主の戦いであるということです。All the Lord asked the people to do was to go out the next day and see what he was going to do. ただ神様は次の日人々が外に出て神様がすることをただ眺めているという命令でした。He told the people to position themselves in a place Where they could see the invading armies. And when they did, they would see the salvation of the Lord in their behalf. Finally, in verse 17, he said, Don't be afraid. Tomorrow, go out and face them. For the Lord is with you. Now remember, now remember, a huge army, actually three armies, are marching on Judah, and God's instructions to the people are not to fight and not to retreat. Instead, they were to go out and watch what the Lord is going to do. Notice how the Lord's message is received. Having heard the message, Jehoshaphat, the king of Judah, bowed his head, his face to the ground. The king's forehead was on the ground, 
as he worshipped his king, the king of kings. And how about the people of Judah and Jerusalem? Were they satisfied? Did this word from the Lord relieve their fears? Verse 18. They too, that is all the inhabitants of Jerusalem, fell down before the Lord, worshiping the Lord. You see, by faith, the king and his people rejoiced in their victory even before it had happened. The next morning they were up at dawn to see what the Lord would do. And as they went out, they were met by King Jehoshaphat, who simply said, Listen to me, O Judah and inhabitants of Jerusalem. Put your trust in the Lord, and you will be established. Put your trust in his prophets and succeed. So they marched off to the battlefield like they were going to a festival, the singers leading the way. Oh, wait a minute. <laughs> I forgot to tell you about the singers. Now, normally, when an army goes out to off the battle, it has the leaders up front. And usually, these leaders are the strongest and the most courageous warriors. But in this case, this army who was led by praise singers, a praise team. <laughs> you say, Pastor, you got to be kidding. You can't go to the war led by a praise team. <laughs> well, look at verse 22. They were singing, Oh, give thanks to the Lord for his loving kindness, his everlasting. I may not have the tune exactly right, but that's what they were singing. And not only were they singing, verse 21 says they were wearing their holy attire. They were wearing their church clothes. Now, when God heard his people singing their song of faith, he set ambushes against the sons of Ammon, Moab, and Mount Seir, who had invaded Judah, so that they were struck down. See, when the Lord heard his chosen people singing their song of faith, he confounded the army. How did he confound them? Well, he so stirred up the opposition that they fought and destroyed one another. The three armies, first two of them were against one. And they destroyed the one. Then the two fought and they destroyed each other. For description of what happened, we look at verse 23. 
For the people of Ammon and Moab stood up against the inhabitants of Mount Seir to utterly kill and destroy them. And when they had made an end of the inhabitants of Seir, they helped destroy one another. So when Judah arrived, the only thing they had left to do was collect the spoils of the war, a job that took three days to complete. Then with unbounded joy, they praised the Lord and returned to Jerusalem singing, while the neighboring countries took notice and Judah enjoyed peace. Now you can read this story and only see a historical record. But let me tell you, there's something more here. There's something in this story that all of us need to understand today. You see, we're all faced with difficulties. All of us. Young, old, oldest. We're all faced with difficulties. Japanese, Chinese, Americans, we're all faced with difficulties. Oh, it's not the kind that Jehoshaphat faced, but nevertheless, they're difficulties. Family problems, office struggles, financial difficulties and so on, and so on, and so on. And the human tendency is to see these problems, these struggles, these difficulties as personal battles that we must confront all by our little selves. Jehoshaphat could have felt that way and he could have just prepared for war. But he didn't. Instead, instead he called for prayer and he received the Lord's answer. But that's not all, because he also accepted the Lord's answer. The answer was as simple as it was wonderful. See, Jehoshaphat, Jehoshaphat was told that the battle was not his. It was the Lord's battle. So what's your problem? What's your struggle? What's your difficulty today? We go to the throne of grace. God says, give it to him. Give it to the Lord in prayer. And then rest in his promises. But you say, oh, this problem is different. You don't understand, Pastor. This struggle is too hard. This difficulty is too complicated. <laughs> 
、うん、あなたは言われますかしかしこの問題が違います難しすぎますこのが困難は複雑すぎますとおっしゃっていますか、really? If you think that, then maybe your God is too small. I recommend try worshiping the God of Jehoshaphat. saw his God as a great God. Have faith in God. He cannot fail. And remember that old gospel song. It said, Faith, real faith, sees the promises of God. And then laughs at impossibilities. So, if you are not a person, you are a person who is 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 a p At the impossibility. Amen. Well, that's the story of Jehoshaphat.、It's、the instructions from the Lord for us. Stop trying to win the battles on your own, give it to the Lord. How many of you in here saw the movie War Room? Just about everybody. It's a great movie.、And、it's about this subject. A woman was trying to win the battle for her husband as he was kind of moving away from her. She was trying to win it on her own. And then a friend said, It's not your battle. The Lord took over for her. Whatever the problem is, whatever the need is, we have to remember our God is a big God. He's the God of Jehoshaphat. He's the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And He can do anything. Oh, there's one thing He cannot do. What is that, Kawabe san? Fail. He cannot fail. <laughs> He has the right answer. Father God, teach us. <coughs> teach us, Lord. May your Holy Spirit just encourage us when we have a battle, whether it's at school or whether it's at work or whether it's in the family or wherever it is, that you want to help. You want us to rest after we visit the mercy seat, the throne of grace. And pray. Help us to remember that, Father, and give to you the problems we have. In Jesus' name, Amen. There's a hymn I'd like us to sing. It's in the it's a number 536 in your hymnal. You stay seated. It's called Have Faith in God.
faith sometimes gets too small, Lord. Encourage us and lead us and, and enlarge our faith, Lord. That we will come to you with every problem, with every need, with every burden. And see the wonderful thing that you will do for us, even as you did for Jehoshaphat and the people so many years ago. Now, Lord, as we go from here, continue to shower us with your grace, your mercy. And Lord, make us a blessing to each other we meet. In Jesus' name, amen.